Okay, let's take a look at the layers of the Earth now. In physical geography, while we don't deal with the inside of the Earth, none of us have ever seen it, by the way, it is important to focus in on the Earth's history and a little bit about how the crust has come to be. Now, I like to back up a little bit and talk about how the Earth came together. About four and a half billion years ago, there were lots of um, blobs from uh, an astronomical event that were swirling around, gathering. This is called accretion. These molten blobs eventually started to form together into one giant blob. And early in our Earth's history, we were completely molten. Okay, and that is important because what's going to happen now is the heavier elements that came from outer space will then migrate toward the center. And those heavier elements are those like iron and nickel. So today, four and a half billion years later, we still have an Earth that is molten in the interior. Uh, we have a crust, a little bit like a, a bowl of porridge, maybe where you get this crust that congeals over the top of it. And uh, through radioactive decay, we still have a lot of that heat in the inside of the Earth. But the second factor we have to know is that we have an enormous amount of pressure as well. And that is actually going to make the center of the Earth solid. So let's take a look uh, at some of the three layers and then we'll zoom into the uh, core area. The three layers are the core. We have an inner and an outer core. We have the mantle right in here. And uh, this is roughly about half of the diameter of the Earth. And finally, we have um, the lithosphere with the crust on the very top. So let's take a look now at the core. And here you have it. Let's take a look at that core. It is solid iron, just like this. And right in here we can see it says that we do have nickel. Scientists believe there is nickel, another heavy element in the solid inner core. Um, and it is under a great deal of pressure. Now normally at 10,000 degrees or nearly 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, you'd think something would be molten. But when you add so much pressure from being that far underneath all of this weight, it is in fact solid. Moving on up. The outer core, scientists believe, is liquid, and we think that it generates the Earth's magnetic field as it convex around. Okay, this would also have heavy minerals and elements, I meant to say. Now, how do scientists know we have these different layers? Let's say one's solid, one's liquid. They use seismic waves that are sent through the Earth, and then they can detect these different boundaries, such as this one and this one. Let's take a look now at the mantle. And we are now at the mantle, and I want to move our way up to the lithosphere as well. So in the mantle, it's about 1,800 miles thick. It is stiffer. There is actually a zone between the liquid outer core and the mantle. Now, scientists believe as you get toward the upper reaches of the mantle, it gets to be a lot more plastic-like and flows until you get up to a region called the asthenosphere, translated as the weak sphere, which we think flows a lot like tar. And if you get even closer, let's say to a mid-oceanic ridge where the seafloor is spreading, um, it's probably pretty liquid right there, if not molten. We know we have volcanoes on the bottom of the ocean floor. And we know in subduction zones where these plates subduct or go underneath one another with a little help from seawater that uh, then allows it to melt, we do get um, indeed molten magma. If we move up though, the mantle becomes more and more rigid and that is called the lithosphere. The very upper reaches where it becomes solid and we have this line of discontinuity between tar, let's say, and solid rock. There's a guy named uh, I don't know his first name, but Mahor, Mahor uh, We say I can't even pronounce it. He was a Croatian man about 100 years ago who uh, discovered this layer of discontinuity. Uh, scientists call it the Moho for short. Uh, but that is where we do have the crust begin. And in our next video, we're going to talk about the crust. But in general, we have two kinds of crust. We have the oceanic crust, and we have the continental crust.
Okay, and so over here I show the oceanic crust, and to the right here I show the continental crust. So let's take a look at that in the next video.